uh, good morning everybody uh, the title is a bit ambitious to stay in a quarter of uh, of hour to talk about um, energy data compound data bms data but uh, i hope that i give you some interesting point to be deeper uh, investigated on the uh, project european project that i worked on um, couple of words on energy team which is the company that i work with um, energy team is an italian company uh, has almost 25 years and 80 people that work there and our core business is to um, furnish uh, um, energy measuring system uh, that means that we care about the um, electric analyzer that have, have to be placed on electric switchboard we care about data acquisition and publication so visualization software and uh, we care about energy analysis in uh, uh, various um, uh, manner of visualization or uh, to valorization of the data so the um, applying this uh, business to the building means to tackle with the increasing and increasing source of uh, uh, data that can be used to maintain in uh, efficiency uh, an existing building or a new building so we um, contribute um, with our energy monitoring uh, system to um, um, maintain a building efficient while uh, evaluating the performance of the building in comparison with the um, building owner expectancy or the designing expectancy one example of our uh, energy monitoring system um, is uh, like uh, this top-down approach so we integrate uh, in various okay. we integrate in uh, various part of the energy usage our devices and uh, we integrate system um, devices for other producer for the other uh, energy utility and uh, we concentrate all the data in uh, a transmission system uh, and with a visualization with either our software or the proprietary software of um, of a building um, so the the idea behind is to go uh, deeper and deeper in the energy investigation uh, while integrating data from bms or um, temperatures etc um, what what is the objective the objective is to um, have the possibility to uh, evaluate and maintain the performance of a building within uh, his, uh, um, his life. Um, so I will now uh, show you some um, uh, manner of visualization of the data in order to let you uh, evaluate how the data can be used for uh, uh, maintain a performance of a building. In this case, I show you uh, a scatter plot. Uh, so it's common graph that relate an X with an Y. Uh, but in this case, the energy usage of a building expressed in terms of um, daily average power uh, for uh, an year of um, um, a winter season and being expressed uh, with uh, the external temperature and the data and being clustered, uh, separating for this office building uh, the work days for example from monday to friday for the weekends saturday and uh, and sunday in this case you can see clearly that the two uh, cluster of data highlight uh, two different um, uh, two different behavior of the building and then you have two energy signatures that help you to evaluate within uh, the different winter season uh, how the performance of the building is uh, continuing to work uh, obviously those data in the bottom are the ones that are not related to the heating season and so you can also verify as it happened to me to verify that there are no uh, extra consumption let's uh, make a step further if you apply the concept to um, average the data and cluster them in different uh, visualization 
uh, with different usage. Now you have the possibility to have various energy signature for the different energy uh, usage. The one is the heating, like I just shown. So obviously, to the decreasing of the outdoor temperature, you have an increasing of the heating consumption. But for example, the building electricity show uh, the bottom usage within uh, that is normally uh, to every building, kind of uh, external lighting or uh, um, minimum ventilation, etc., to the normal usage within uh, um, the um, uh, daily consumption. And then you can have also the evaluation of um, the electricity for climatization during the summer and uh, the you can evaluate the running unit electricity and domestic of water and usage of water. Here you can see how uh, the identifying of different energy signature of the building help you to, for example, identify incorrect set point, set up of set point of the system. So this is the previous um, energy signature compared to the one that is not as expected. In this case, uh, one in, in, in a simpler way to with uh, an increased amount of data, once you define the rule that explain the uh, energy behavior of the building, you can um, more easily uh, highlight and correcting and set up the system that can occur within the usage of the building. Another uh, way of visualize the building is carpet plot, also called as heat map. Um, in with this this visualization, you compare daily data. You can see few months of data here. With the hourly data, you can see the 24 hours of the day here. And then you uh, associate uh, a scale of evaluation. In this case, the specific electric power of, of a building. And then in this way, you can uh, easily visualize uh, um, a lot of numbers. Here we are talking about 4,000 data uh, as an hourly data. And uh, it can highlight a lot of information uh, for your building or your energy usage. Um, for example, here you can see a national vacation because there are three days instead of two of weekends. You can see here the 1st of May, uh, the workers' day that is uh, generally vacation in Europe. You can see the usage on Saturday, which is still there, Saturday morning. The building is not used, but there is some usage in it. Uh, you can highlight the daylight saving time, uh, so the, the changing of hours of the people that uh, usage uh, use the building and so on so the idea behind uh, with an increasing number of data uh, to to find way to evaluate uh, them in um, easier way to uh, avoid uh, unexpected energy consumption an example of usage of uh, a carpet plot this is the signature of an running units um, so it's just one data, the electric consumption of the fan of the air running unit. And then you can see that in this uh, supermarket, generally it's open at 9.30 and it's closed at around 22. And then it's normal to have the air running unit that works within those hours continuously in order to uh, have the uh, air exchange, which is necessary for the population of the commercial uh, building but what is expected is this red line within the night from uh, 0 to, to 9 that means that there is an extra consumption of uh, the running unit which is due by the building management system or uh, uh, the turning on the fan in an unexpected way um, so here you can use that this fan is around 20 kilowatts even not knowing nothing about the, the fan itself. And um, so I if you uh, think about a system like this one, or this one, which is uh, that, that have an increasing number of data, once you set up the visualization uh, of the building itself, you can try to describe it in a uh, uh, more manageable way uh, within the building lifetime. Um, 
with this concept in your in your mind now we go further the uh, approach that have been uh, uh, used in a quantum project which is um, which is the 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 call was trying to ask us to uh, reduce the gap from the expected energy performance within the design and the construction with the one uh, that is in the operation um, it's normal to 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 know to to verify that there is often uh, an unexpected consumption from five to thirty percent uh, and so we our task our job was to develop um, low cost methodologies low cost approach to try to investigate and to uh, reduce this gap from the uh, designing as good as you can to the building operation. Um, so generally on, on, uh, on a building during his lifetime, we was trying to investigate the effectiveness of three different tools. Um, a new uh, energy measuring device that had been developed by Energy Team. You can have a look on it on outside after uh, um, after our um, um, presentation. Uh, and then I will present you um, comfort meter and the performance test bench, which, has, uh, which are tools for investigate the comfort of a building and the performances of a BMS, building management system. Um, so uh, we uh, now we will present uh, the free tools in a detailed, uh, uh, more detailed way. Um, so uh, this one is the tool that has been developed by um, Energy Team. It's called NG9, um, where nine is the amount of input points to, to the device. NG is simple next generation of uh, devices. Uh, you can see here um, a small device, which is five DIN models, say eight centimeter of dimension. So integrate nine measures in eight centimeter, which is already from the integration point of view in existing switchboard uh, an advantage. You know that you, you can utilize a small place for for uh, for it. Then we work it on the connectors that have been uh, unified compared to the different probes that go from one to 8,000 amperes. That means that with the same device, um, generally speaking, you can uh, uh, integrate the measurement of very big building or a very detailed uh, load, such as a lighting or a single fan. Uh, just a matter of specifying the different probes from uh, the smaller one to the, to the bigger one, um, depending on the existing uh, uh, detail of the switchboard itself. A step further, this is valid for either monophase or free phase measurement. So you can integrate on the same device. Uh, um, for example, coming in a boiler room, you can integrate the heat pump, which is normally um, powered on free phase with various pumps, hydraulic pumps that are no sometimes powered in uh, monophase. So with the same device, the same switchboard, you integrate with one tool uh, uh, the different level of uh, power of the um, uh, HVAC. And then uh, often um, an energy consumption is uh, modified by its influencing factor, such as the temperature or um, the control signal or whatever. Then we developed this small transducer. Uh, the dimension is like one euro coin or um, so uh, a coin. And this allow to uh, introduce in the same device, which is basically a power analyzer, so um, a tool for, for measuring electricity and its parameters. You can integrate existing measuring system for, for steam, for uh, um, water, gas, and whatever, with digital signal, with analog signal, or also temperatures from normal probes, such as platinum uh, probes, etc. Last but not least, uh, this do not uh, have higher energy consumption by itself. So it's been designed to to have few uh, very a couple of watts of uh, consumption while operating. 
This is the same approach, uh, but uh, with the dimension 96 per 96. That means that it can be substituted by existing amperometer or voltmeter that are normally uh, existing in existing switchboard that are generally analog. And so in, in, in this, this is kind of installation in, in front of switchboard, you just cancel the existing voltmeter, you introduce this power analyzer that can introduce up to nine measure or three measure on three phase while using the traditional current transformer or integrating a new, uh, a new one. Um, once you generate the data, then the last step is to collect the data and publish them. Mm -hmm. So we also work it on uh, a new gateway, another time a small dimension, so it's uh, 8 centimeter 5D model, is able to copy uh, hundreds of measurement uh, once integrated in the existing uh, um, Modbus network of different manner of transmitted data. So we can integrate either our measurement devices or other producer devices. We integrate 140 protocols or similar uh, in the uh, memory of the system. Uh, so the acquisition is guaranteed and the data are stored for years within this one. So the memory is uh, 32 gigabytes or more, depending on the, the, the needs. And then uh, we integrate various manner of communication. That means that Ethernet, GSM, um, Wi-Fi and uh, uh, local communication have been introduced. One uh, innovation is that there is an integrated web server on it. That means that with my laptop or my mobile, I can assess directly the, the tool on the site and have a small verification of the data uh, that they are working or not. So help the maintenance of the system. And then you publish the data or some software or some, uh, uh, so the images that I show you is some of the images of our software that have these uh, visualization techniques, our software can have just histogram or similar to evaluate that. Um, okay, enough from the energy measuring uh, devices point of view. Uh, so now I will show uh, you the, some details about the comfort meter, which is basically a very easy tool. Um, uh, it's just a questionnaire. Uh, um, a web-based questionnaire that um, go through the occupants of a building, giving to them a um, few questions like this one. So for example, for the air comfort, do you think that your air is enough uh, or is too cold or is too heat, etc.? And then uh, ask you about temperature, air, light, noise, control of the systems and uh, also the cleanliness and the aesthetics of the building. So the idea is to have in uh, an easy way, through a questionnaire, a web-based questionnaire, uh, the description of the general comfort of the occupants of the buildings. Um, in this way, with 10 minutes per person, you, you, you can average statistically the data based on the actual comfort norms, such as the ISO uh, 7730, uh, which is the most common for air and the humidity evaluation. And um, the report that is auto-generated by the software that they receive the data uh, give you some hints about productivity of the people uh, according to the to the results within the uh, building energy usage and we'll give you an overview of all the different um, all the different uh, um, comfort aspects so uh, the red is the wrong uh, performance the green is the uh, better than average performance and this one is for example uh, that the winter is never too cold so it's too heat um, or in this case the people think that is good in this case is good in this case is not so good etc and so the result is that for building manager for um, a building portfolio manager etc yes some uh, clear indication mm, from the point of view of the people from the point of view of the comfort what are the most uh, significant problems uh, uh, within the building usage. Why to approach uh, this way? Because it's easy, cost effective and give a rough estimation while uh, uh, based on statistical overview. So it's valid from the, um, from the um, 
uh, results uh, um, uh, validity um, and then uh, um, uh, avoid the approach to uh, use some uh, strange systems like fangerometer which is kind of uh, 10 to 15 measurement devices that have been placed for a few weeks in a uh, uh, relevant room etc to, to have some data or to install uh, uh, hundreds of uh, measurement devices for uh, avoid for uh, measure temperatures etc etc uh, the third tool uh, which is the list uh, the last one and then um, my presentation uh, is finished is the performance test bench um, here we are trying to um, evaluate the performance of a BMS a building management system so th the system that have the uh, task to let the building work uh, as expected so the complex of electronics and uh, valves and uh, um, set points etc that determine if the air is 20 Celsius degree or if the amount of uh, ventilation is um, 40 cubic meter per person and so on uh, it's very hard to to evaluate the performance of a building management system with in a traditional way you need a commission engineer um, a very well-trained guy that is able to go on site and evaluate the wiring and the control and set points and know about each HVAC system and is able to verify with uh, a lot of tools if the, the, the air velocity is correct and so on and so on uh, while tackling with uh, an history of the building and introducing a different system for lighting and for uh, um, temperature and so on uh, we definitely use different approach so first step is to uh, obtain the functional specification Functional specification means what are the specifications for let the building work. So 14, 20 degrees, you need to have the um, the heating system turn on when the external temperature is minus five or or minus or zero degree, etc. Um, and then to if they are not there to implement uh, to evaluate uh, to discuss about the working of the HVAC and to implement the functional specification on the software. Then to obtain the BMS data, it is just easy. You, you ask to the building manager to extract the raw data uh, from, from the system. So just give us the data. And then what you do is to uh, evaluate the data comparing to the expected uh, behavior, the expected uh, functional specification, and you highlight in which moment uh, and uh, how much is the building uh, uh, working compared to the rule. Where is the adventure is that uh, at the first stage you obviously have a feedback but once you have written the rule on the software and the building is, is, is the same you can recheck the building monthly each three months each year in order to verify that BMS is correctly working. So um, once you set up the data acquisition and the rules of functionings of the building uh, you can uh, uh, in a cost-effective way evaluate the performance of the BMS throughout the, the years and then you will have to auto-generate the report about uh, the building working and um, you will highlight when and how uh, the, the red uh, is uh, saying to you that the building is not working correctly um, some words about the cost of it um, so case of our tool we work it for redus by half to a third the per measurement point cost that means uh, essentially the cost of uh, an energy monitoring system is to by the amount of device that you place on the building so in this way we um, introducing um, a small system that integrate a lot of data reduce the, the pure cost of the electronics so reduce the, uh, the cost per measurement point uh, so we can declare that uh, compared to previous system our new generation costs um, quite half or a third according to the device that you place on it 
obviously this is not true for one measurement point and become true when you have 10, 12, 30 measurement points, etc. Uh, because also you have some cost about uh, procurement uh, and uh, evaluation of the system and so on. Um, what about comfort? Uh, this is just, just um, an interview of the people. So besides not considering the 10 minutes per person in terms of work cost, do not make sense. Uh, the, the cost for the building owner is from 1,000 to 2,000 euro. So you, you pay the report. That means that you pay the guy that will uh, acquire the data after the interview and uh, uh, will prepare a report based on your buildings. Once it's done, can be repeated, for example, before and after uh, an intervention on the building you know, to verify the results or uh, um, within the building lifetime. This um, approach has been accepted uh, f from some uh, um, environmental certification of the building, such as the well certification that is used in Central Europe, as far as I understand. Um, so it's also valid uh, f for approach like LEED or something, in order to verify uh, after the commissioning the uh, expectancy of comfort of the building. Um, and the same can be said more or less for this approach. Uh, the initial cost to write down, to describe the, the data, uh, to obtain the first report uh, could be according to the um, simplicity of the investigation uh, from 1,000 to 3,000 uh, euro. But once you have set down, you just have to transmit the data and ask for a new report. So uh, the developer, the Synavision now has starting to um, work with various ESCOs or various uh, operators. And then uh, um, a lot of people use it by themselves and create a, a, a normal uh, report uh, each three months for, for their buildings and to evaluate the performance. Um, um, so so um, um, enough from my, enough from my part. Uh, now or to uh, have a look uh, on, have our look on our devices, our devices later, on later on within the business networking, business networking lunch. lunch. Okay, thank you.